we are welcoming back Brock Meyer. Quite excited that he Hello. is here. Uh, thank you, David. Boy, that was a quick intro. Usually, I'm I'm used to Dan whining at me, you know that I'm that I'm drunk. Which, by the way, I'm even for me, even for me, I'm a little more than usual today. And uh, usually, he whines at me about being drunk and and not giving him a podcast. So you threw me there with that quick intro. Well, Dan's but, not uh, here today. Well, great. Okay, always a pleasure to be back on the Dan Levitard show with Stu Gott. Where is Dan? Is he in the bathroom or something? Because <laughs> I imagine at Dan's age and health level that his prostate is about the size of a compact European sedan. So, you know, I'm guessing that his number ones probably take about as long as his number twos these days. Either, either way, he's definitely sitting down. So, yeah, Dan, take a load off. You deserve the rest. I can, I can wait. He's not... But you're saying he's not there at all? Like he's he's not he's like not in the studio? He is nowhere in my view. Well, what does that mean? You just lost <laughs> track of him? It's a narrow view. <laughs> Great. Okay. So you guys are a well oiled machine there, huh? All right, so Dan's a wall. I'll can I talk to Stu Gotts? But before I do, let me turn down the brightness here on my computer monitor because I'd rather not witness the damage that a week of following the Grateful Dead around can do to a man's already sunken <laughs> eyes and his gray skin tone. Uh, if Stugatz has gone full Gollum, I got to wear some kind of protective <laughs> blindfold or something. I am so, sorry to tell you that Stugatz, shockingly, is not here either. Are you are you kidding me? Are you being serious? Stugatz is not there either? This is the Dan Levitard show with Stugatz. And so there's no Dan Levitard or Stu Gotts today. Great. Sorry. I got, what, what's your name again, sir? David, Sam, David Samson, as in Samson and Delilah. They, they threw you out there. <laughs> Never okay. heard that one. Well, what am I? Oh, excuse me. Was that, was that just a little trite for you? I didn't come up with something clever enough. I'm just trying to get your name right. Cause I don't know who the heck you are. I mean, I feel like I showed up to Yankee stadium to watch a little league game. Do the good people at DraftKings know about this? Do they know that they're they're paying good money for the JV squad to get in some reps here today? And I just thought of a better question. Why am I here if mom and dad are gone? Why am I being forced to sit at the kids' table with David Sampson and Delilah? I can actually assure you, Brock Meyer, that I am perfectly fine handling the show. Okay, Dave. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, point well taken, but and I mean no disrespect now. But you can't handle shit, sir, okay? Because I've seen clips, excuse me, circulating online. And Mike sure, what was that? Walking you around on a leash while you're begging him for his telephone number? Good God. And just to head you right off at the pass, no, can't have my number either. If I ever get curious about how you and your friends poison baseball in Florida so thoroughly that the Marlins can't even draw 8,000 people to watch a 400 hitter. I'll just look that up on your Wikipedia page, okay? Should be right under the controversy heading, right near the picture of Mike Schur bending you over his knee and spanking your what I imagine is your hairy ass until it's red. Good gosh, David Sam... I'm sorry, David Sampson. That might have come off a little disrespectful. But for me, it's not. That's just throat clearing. I just, I have to get that stuff out of my system before I can really get going. So don't worry. I did not mean all of that. It was a little bit mean. I did mean most of it, but I didn't mean all of it. So uh, anyway, I'm so glad I'm drinking today. What would you like to talk about, David? That people know very well that my ass is not hairy. What? People know that well? <laughs> what are you on? Uh, what do they call that? OnlyFans? What do you want on OnlyFans with, you, with your buttocks? NBA that, it's free got its agency David for Samson's me. That's buttocks. what we want to talk about. It's beginning Friday. Brock Meyer, what predictions? I just need a neck brace, a neck brace for the transition there. So David, <laughs> David Samson's butt to NBA free agency. Got it. Okay. What would you like to know about the NBA free agency, David Samson's buttocks? I want to know who's going where. Well, I only have one prediction. It's hard to say, right? That prediction is that Damian Lillard is not going to come to Miami, no matter how much everybody down there at the Meadowlark Media Studio might wish that he was. Aww. No, I'm sorry to be anti-Santa Claus or whatever, but the most likely scenario is that he just stays put. 
because Damon, the Trailblazers organization, have a Sid and Nancy level of codependence over there. The only way it appears they're going to abandon each other is through a player slash organization murder slash suicide. But if Lillard is traded, I believe he'll go to the Brooklyn Nets because their offer of picks and players is far, far better for a rebuilding timeline than anything that he can offer. Now, I know what fans are saying down there, and I don't totally disagree with it. But what if what if Miami is Dame's preferred destination? What if that's where the guy wants to go? Well, to that I would remind them that Lillard, unlike Bradley Beal, fascinatingly, does not get to choose his destination through a no-trade clause, which means that the only way he can come to Miami is through the altruism of the Portland owners, just the sheer charity, charity by them at the expense of their own bottom line. Now, David Sampson's buttocks, I know, (laughs) I know about your belief in the good-hearted nature of the billionaire class. You've been very clear (laughs) about that, that billionaires succeed because of their brilliant minds and their gentle souls. But personally, I never had a taste for blatant bootlicking, so my belief swings wildly (laughs) in the opposite direction. So to settle this disagreement as objectively as possible, I want to be fair to you, okay? You and your and all the people on OnlyFans who just love your buttocks. Let's turn over to Google. Okay, let's look at Google here. Let's see who owns the Trailblazers. That's the first thing. I know that Paul Allen, the co-founder of Microsoft, used to own them. So let's see. Which new bootstrapped American genius is in charge of the team these days? Got it. His sister, Judy. And her top advisor is Paul Allen's college roommate. Boy. A Nepo sister and a Nepo dorm assignment. But listen, I am sure they are just a couple of gentle sweethearts. Nope. Hold up on that one, David's buttocks. Flag on the play. Because I'm reading an article of accusations of, and I'm quoting now, toxic workplace, harassment of bodyguards, amazingly, and wow, huh, a refusal to speak with Damian Lillard or his camp. Now, who would have thunk it? Gee, I guess, wow. I got to take a minute because I guess America isn't a meritocracy and that maybe billionaires only care about the accumulation of assets and power at the expense of humanity. So, no, I don't think Portland is just going to drop off Damian Lillard on Miami's doorstep holding out a nice bottle of wine out of the goodness of their hearts. I don't think that. Well, if you don't think that, what other teams are you looking at this weekend? Well, you're a good sport. I got to say that, David. I'm just like, I'm just ramrodding you and you're just, you're just asking me polite questions. I got to admire your professional demeanor. I really do. And your haircut. You're looking good. Um, What'd you ask me? What was it? I'm just so taken with you. What'd you say? I am so distracted by your brilliance that I need to know what other teams should we be looking out for as NBA free agency starts this weekend. Oh, all right. Uh, Sacramento. Sacramento. They seem poised to me to make a move. Uh, as many have pointed out, but because all the contenders, they're the only team with huge amounts of cap space, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, pardon me, Sazerac, come back up on me. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, but much like insults about you, I have to get that out or I can't go on. <laughs> and everything I'm reading, uh, they keep mentioning, and I'm quoting this, a Sacramento tax. You heard about that? Which is like adding another 20% on top of a free agent's tab just to get them to want to move to Sacramento. I mean, that's got to be disheartening to those King fans living in Sacramento. I mean, sometimes it must feel like the entirety of NBA fandom is just laughing at them. And that's because they are, David. And that laughter is deafening. But, you know, at least the people of Sacktown can console themselves with the fact that they do not live in Oklahoma City. That's right. I'm circling back to that. <laughs> There's no such thing as an OKC free agency tax because no NBA player would ever choose to go there of his own volition. <laughs> the only way the Thunder can even field the team these days is to accumulate enough draft picks, thereby forcing teenagers, young men, into indentured servitude. A contract that can last up to seven years, seven years, seven in OKC uh, of driving three hour drive to Dallas just to have some fun. Seven years of pretending, oh, you know, that Indian restaurant, that wasn't that bad. Seven years of convincing yourself, hey, this zoo, this zoo is the best zoo in the state. No, thank you.
keep your millions of dollars. I'd much rather get the Sacramento tax. Again, I apologize to anybody in OKC catching these trays. Mm-hmm. I wish there was some way. For, I wish, you know what, Oklahoma people, I wish there was some way for you to control my constant shots. But unfortunately, Oklahoma is an open carry state, so I can just keep firing. I can just keep firing in Sosatcha till I'm unafraid of living there, which will be exactly never. <laughs> Thank you, Brockmar. But we oh, you're so welcome, Dave. Oh, David. I, I don't you know what welcome, else to sir. say. I'm I'm touched at your view of Oklahoma and of you thinking that that's what we should be watching. It's a lot of basketball for Brockmar today, man. There's so much baseball that I, I love. Get I love to. all sports, and I love uh, I love David Sampson. I mean, I'm just very inspired today by David's sort of. It's like a Mad Men vibe coming off you, David. Can I you know convince I mean? you to talk baseball at some point? Because there's a lot sure. that's going on in that sport that is meaningful I, I, to me. Of course, I know you're a baseball man, and as am I, and I'm excited. That's why they, it's ostensibly why they bring me here to talk baseball. But now I'm obsessed with my own madman observation. There's somebody <laughs> in that cast you remind me of. It's definitely not Don Draper. I can't figure out which one. Which one of them are you? I think you're the guy who got the girl pregnant, and they totally dropped that storyline for reasons I don't understand. Pete anyway, Campbell. Yeah, Pete, thank you. Oh, is that nerdy uh, Lord of the Rings lady? <laughs> I is she. Ah, nice to hear from you again. So you watch all shows, not just nerd out over uh, the sci-fi stuff. I nerd huh? out over Mad Men, too. Yeah, well, me too. I'm right with you there. Got very good taste in there, surrounded by the, the freaks. Anyway, what were we talk? Baseball. Oh, my gosh. Okay. It's the uh, best thing that we can talk to you about because of all of the storylines. That revolve around Miami. <laughs> there are there are several, you know. Um, I mentioned one, which is you ruining the whole uh, the whole deal down there. But um, <laughs> the first of all, the the rules, the new rules, right? You'll agree. Working with flying colors. I mean, we we are not used to things getting better in America, but I'm telling you, with baseball, it's true this year. The games are consistently under three hours. They feature speed, just speed all over the field, which means we've reached soccer levels of entertainment now. I mean, we even have new rules for extra innings, which seem like random. But, uh, you know, just like the extra time in soccer, right? So you hear that soccer? Hmm. Baseball is now once again, excuse me, America's third favorite sport. Number three with a bullet, baby. A uh, bullet that will never, ever, ever come close to number two. But still, a very exciting time. I mean... <laughs> We had a uh, a perfect game last night. Only 24 of those out there, granted, against the A's, so it's got to come with some kind of asterisk. But, you know, things are getting exciting everywhere. Real athletes, real ones are playing the game again. These are not your daddy's John Crux spitting tobacco on carpets of green astroturf. I'm talking about honest-to-God physical freaks like uh, Ellie De La Cruz, six-foot-five-inch rookie shortstop, Cincinnati, already the fastest player in the game. He hits oppo tacos as if they were pop flies. 21 years old. He has single-handedly lifted the Reds from the depths of the standings all the way to first place, And unlike in Miami. They're packing the stadium there for the first time in, in years. This kid is the greatest thing to happen to Cincinnati since they added spaghetti noodles to chili for some unbelievably horrific reason. But there is an, a better athlete in the game. We know who that is. Stop me if you heard it before, kid. Shohei Otani. My goodness. This week... Two home runs he hit, struck out 10 guys in the same game. It's insane. God, I get crazy talking about him. This should be what everybody in America is talking about. Not Trump waving around secret documents or not Biden sundowning. I mean, because this is something unprecedented. This is like something holy in an already sacred game. Networks should be interrupting regularly scheduled programming for every single at bat of this guy. Cult should form. You're praying to the back of Shohei Otani's baseball card. Y- you know what, David? Maybe you, people compare him to Babe Ruth, right? To me, no comparison. Otani is far, far superior, right? You heard me right. I saw J.J. Reddick bury Bob Cousy dead in the ditch. I'm going to do him one better. Babe Ruth, overrated. Whoa. Over- Balloon man with hot dog scraps and gin building him up who took a running start at baseball practice fastballs in a segregated league. I mean, for his era, great pitcher and a great hitter, but he never did both at the same time. Like Shohei Otani does every single week. Every week, Otani blesses us 
with a Blatteldorf. <laughs> I got to take it. So, <laughs> I get a little worked up. Otani blesses us every week with a reinvention of the eternal. It's amazing. And he's going to be a whole lot richer than Babe Ruth ever was in one a season. Amen. Amen. All how right, Brock that, Meyer. I mean, you know, how about that uh, Tampa Bay's entire payroll isn't as much as what Verlander gets for a season? Is that right? It's about right. If that's not right, it's, it's almost right. It's close to right. But the real issue around these teams is they're spending a lot of money and they're not getting anything for it. The Mets, I, the Padres, and they yeah. look at the Reds or the Marlins, and they say, you know what? We don't have to spend and waste all this money. They're going to see what they do with Otani. What else do you want to plug here before we got to go? <laughs> we'll see where Otani goes. Um, it is going to be for a lot of money, and I think he will deliver wherever he goes. But uh, plug, I got nothing else to plug, uh, nothing for me. No I do remain upset with, uh, with, with Dan for abandoning me. So I would like, you know what I'm going to plug? I'm going to plug Dan Levitard's email address, oh, which wow. is, uh, you know, no, this is fine. Relax. Uh, it's Dan the uh, Man Levitard, that's all one word, at AOL.com. You heard that right. AOL.com. The man, the man runs a startup, for Christ's sake, and he just pollutes the inboxes of his employees with that filth. I mean, you think a green bubble in the group chat is annoying. <laughs> Just wait till you see Dan Levitard barf up memories of the old 56K dial-up right into your <laughs> inbox. Embarrassing. You got Horrible. Mail. Feel free to email Dan and tell him so. Dan the Man Levitard at AOL.com. <laughs> Let him know. Thank you, Brock Meyer, for not giving out his cell phone so this is not all of our last days in the studio. The New York Mets will have to decide what their plan is because their current plan has not worked at all. They brought in Steve Cohn. He bought the team. Mets fans rejoiced. Stu Gotts can't name a player. The payroll is out of this orbit. They can't win a game, and Steve Cohn called himself a press conference on Twitter. He called it himself. He sat down and did it, and then he did something that you're never supposed to do. He acknowledged and admitted that David Sampson was right. Also, David Sampson is fined yeah. for his phone going off. Yeah. That was a critical, critical That's thing. That's 50. Yeah. Cents? Dollars. 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 Yeah. That's $50? Yeah. $50, yeah. You actually yeah. have to buy us all lunch. Wow. That too, yeah. That's well, in addition to the $50. That's two lunches, actually. And don't you think about expensing it. No pork either. <laughs> yeah, even though it's a piggy bank right there. I will buy you all lunch. And if your an phone goes off again, you have to refill the piggy bank with all the m fine bucket money that was stolen. Yes. Is that also an unwritten rule? Also, you have to apologize for the Blue Jays trade. No. <laughs> but Danny Echeverry is still in the game. I'll take your word for it. You've heard of him. I'll take a salmon wrap from Pure Vida. There's a food hall. Like Second of the day? <laughs> Seven minutes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot. But it's I tight. Like, it's tight. Yeah. Oh. It's a sensory overload. Kind oh. of feels like a little fifth It's a food element. court. That's what it's supposed to feel like. No, but it's it's, it's a tight food court. And also, don't wear a skirt on the second floor. Or on the stairs. Where are the rules of the fines posted? Yuck. Because I haven't seen, normally in a place of work, there needs to be posted in the lunchroom, in the lunch area, in the food area. There have to be certain rules protecting employees. This nerd. Where? <laughs> he wants it It's posted. there. It's on, the, it's on the door leading Unwritten. to the stairs. Yeah, there is. They're outside the locker room. No, no, no. There the are, unwritten rules? The, the no, rules are no, in the, the kitchen. Rules. Rules are in the kitchen. So where did it say about the fining for the phone? In, in the kitchen. I have not seen that because it's a kitchen of pork. It's laminated. It's hot on. It's inside the it fridge. Oh, it's inside the fridge? But the you fridge got... is made out of pork. So. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. I'm happy to buy lunch, but I'm not happy to pay the fine. So Okay, I'll, just I, I, how about this? Just put your element. phone on vibrate then. I'll, no, I'll take the settlement for lunch and, and no fine. That's what I'm offering. Yeah. Fine. That, that okay. is my last okay. and final okay. offer. Okay. Okay. Good negotiation. Steve Cohen, you say. Steve Cohen buys the Mets, supposed to change everything. Calls his own press conference yeah. and then says something that basically was to me. 
Pitching is really expensive. I think that's the reason why you know, we're spending as much as we are. Um, you know, position players, we have young players coming up. I think that's going to, over time, help from a payroll perspective. And, and um, you know, listen, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't think it's sustainable in a long term. I mean, just losing the type of money that I'm losing. I mean, it's, it's a lot to ask, okay? And, and um, you know, and frankly, you know, I, I, you know, we'll figure that out as we go, but um, I certainly have the wherewithal to do it, and, and there's just a question of how long. How much yeah. money are you losing? Well, bigger than a breadbasket, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you after the thing, okay? <laughs> the biggest breadbasket ever. Conversation over with Mike. That is Steve Cohn with no reason to lie. Perpetuating the lie that you help fuel? <laughs> Yeah. No, no. Why would Steve That's Cohen? Why, what, what's in it for Steve Cohen to carry on this con guys, that all the owners agreed? Guys, I'm making money hand over fist. <laughs> but my accountant makes it look like I'm losing money. So that's what I tell you guys. I'll tell you more back there, though. Steve Cohn get, does a press conference where he doesn't fire anyone. Mm -hmm. He says he's not going to fire anyone this year. Uh -huh. But what he also said is what he said from the beginning. I've got three to five years to get a World Series built the payroll up, which is the amount of time you get to depreciate most of the assets that you buy when you buy a baseball team, mm -hmm. five years, and then all of a sudden he can't write the checks that he's writing now because it's they get even bigger. Yeah. And then he'll just sell the team and make a, an immense profit. The last yeah. time I bought a baseball team, I got a good six years out of them. Nice. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. I'm the anomaly that they talk. I'm the end of the bell curve. You added 20% depreciation, which is very smart to do, but only in certain asset classes. You got to make sure you get that right. You also have to consider he owns a baseball team in a city that really hates baseball, yeah. does not support their sports teams, yeah. awful sports town, and it's really never going to work with them and their very lackluster affinity towards the baseball teams there. I don't always, know how they got two. And they'll always struggle to two? find a broadcast deal. Yeah. yeah. I believe two. there was a time when they had more than two. Get They're down to two, which is hard to Ooh. imagine. They might be down to one soon. A bit. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if old Steve Cohen can't. Can't make a buck here. You guys there. hear the Shreveport Mets? <laughs> Heard they drafted a new location for a stadium down there. Steve Cohn, in order to make ends meet, has decided to try to get rid of, instead of players to get better, he wants to get rid of the chop shops, which are around City Field, and put a casino in. Wow. He you, won't make any money from that. Well, There's it, no well, money the, in casinos. The Mets won't make any money from that. That mm. is for sure because teams. But it's okay. He can just write off these losses against that. One against hundo. those huge, great, big gains like all people do. And but when you do it to the tune of you a billionaire. Like, you sound like you know a little something about something. No, actually, I, I'm back on David's side because Mike Sher was so convincing in his apology. An apology, yes. So Steve Cohn, the biggest takeaway is that he acknowledged that he can't keep this payroll going, and Mets fans are aghast. They're aghast that, oh, my God, he's not willing to keep funding this team of crap. And on top of that, we may sell at the deadline. So Max Scherzer, when he went from the Nationals mm -hmm. to the Dodgers, had to waive his no-trade clause. Now Max Scherzer could go from the Mets to the Marlins. Where I end here is that our team has an opportunity Wait. to get Mets players because Steve Cohn is willing to pay for them all because he views it as a sunk cost. So the Marlins, who have a great farm system, the Mets, who don't, the Marlins have an opportunity to get a few players to the Mets and make moves for both a bat and an arm that can help them get to October. So the Marlins get to do the thing that other teams historically have done to the Marlins? This is all I'm saying. This is our moment here to get that done. Guys! Marlins fans need to thank the Mets. Stop. Thanks and Cohen. David. You they should write Steve Cohen thank you letters. Thank you, Steve. Or send him happy birthday texts. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. You need to do one more thank thing. Thank you, Steve. You thank need to talk you, to David. Max. Oh. Max has a no-trade clause. Oh, okay. Uh, so we've got a Bradley Beal Max to the Marlins. We need billboards. We need a, songs written about him. He plays basketball. We need 
a lot of things to get Max to want to be a Marlin. Mike, get on a Scherzer song. I Stat. need a song. Oh. Well, does he have any dogs? No, not that I'm aware oh, of. Right. But his oh. eyes are two different colors, and he's not striking out as many guys. But he's ferocious. Who let the dogs out? Who? I'm Who? giving you ideas Steve for Cohen a song. Did. You have one month. The trade deadline is August 1st. Max Scherzer to the Marlins is the best thing we could do. I think I'll start writing songs tomorrow. <laughs> As Florida continues to be the center of the universe of all good in the world, all bad in the world, all everything, now word comes that I've got another thing as I sit next to you. Mm -hmm. I mean... Another thing I have to think about, and it's impacting me because I'm running around my room swatting stuff. <laughs> that happened. One of them escaped. Malaria yeah. is now back on my list. I, malaria pills make you dream weird. Yeah. And now I feel like I have to go find a doctor down here to get me malaria pills. Uh, well, you don't have it, so you don't have to get it. No, but. you take the pills so you don't get it. Oh, well. And if you do get it, you don't die from it. That would, that would have been helpful for young Amin before he caught malaria. I caught malaria in Sudan, and so the pills that I had to take were chloroquinine, um, which, yeah, if you guys remember from COVID days, had like a moment in the sun. Is that like, the bleach that you drink? No. I thought, our buttholes, had, I thought our buttholes had moments in the sun. Yeah, they did. Anal. They still do. Anal tanning. I'm used to blisters in the sun. On your, on your butt. <laughs> Shout out to Brockmire. We also uh, have dengue here, by the way. Dengue fever? Yeah, there's been a couple of cases of dengue I read about last yeah. summer. And Marlon's fever. <laughs> that's not catchy. No vaccine for that. Yeah. Oh, I've, seen, that I've seen everybody doing the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what's, this, what's the background here, and should I be worried? And I'm not asking you for any other reason than you're sitting to my left. Oh, it, it stays in, in you forever, apparently. So and it, you can't, it can't contract it from another person. <laughs> uh, no, you guess. Like mosquitoes. You could if a mosquito bit me and then bit but you. But like, you can't cough on David and give no, him a No, it stays in you it, forever. It, it, yeah. Like it me does. after a couple of drinks. Hey, hey. what? <laughs> Are you soaking? My my I'm a Mormon now. Salt Lake City. It changed Mike in ways that we're right. talking after, after that the this third Uber driver tried it, to no, like, convert so me. Malaria. So uh, again, this is one of Jeremy just hides under my bed. Picks up his feet. What? This is one of what? Ron he, McGill's. He bounces, so you don't have to pump. Yeah. This is hey, one of shout Ron out James McGill's Gordon. Biggest stats that he likes Wait, to throw out. Wait, James Marsden. David, you don't know what soaking is? Could you tell me? Do you know what soaking is? Soaking my toenails? No, no, no. Do, do you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, I know. I know. No. Means Why did point, you say I'm sorry, soaking but your toenails? I wanted to see because after runs, soaking. I do that. Disgusting. Oh, it stops you, them from falling off. Do you no. know what soaking is? No, I don't. Okay. Who wants this? It's one? less gross than that. You got it, Mike. Well, yeah. You're I, the only one. No one wants this one, like Mike. Wants no one wants it. If you watch Jury Duty, I mean, it's easier if I show you. There was a. No, never mind. So. Uh, in, in certain religions, you're not supposed to have sex before marriage, and yeah. so some people think that the way around that is for the male to insert in, in the in, but yeah. not hump, and someone no jumps on the bed so that there is movement without it being like actual well, intentional. The, the sex. That was the, jury no, duty. The jumping yeah. on the bed. That wasn't jury duty. Correct. Yeah, and James Martin Marsden was jumping on the bed. The jumping on the bed is is a little extra. I think I think I've always understood it to be just the act of insertion and no movement, and just sitting there. No, jury duty didn't make up the jumping on the really? bed. Really, they jump they on the bed. That comes from BYU soaker? lore. Is that the role of the soaker to do the jumping no. on no. the bed? No, no, the soaker's soaker. soaking. He's the soaker so has the in the What's James soaking his penis. Marson's job? He's jumping on the bed. Oh, so making no references that. to that Prime show. You keep saying jury duty, and I think it's a Pauly Shore vehicle because I'm old. Yeah. No, Good it's times. Jury Duty. Yeah. It's a brand new show that is phenomenal. Yeah, and two characters soak. Yes. Or a light to show, soak. And I didn't even know that. I'm, I'm familiar with soaking from BYU lore and uh, Pat Bev being told what soaking is. So my only simple question is, what did it have to do with me? I mean, do you want it? To have something to do with you? No, but you were you're asking me. <laughs> Mike brought it up. It's a it good didn't. question. It, it, you're yeah. the guys that said it stays in you forever. I'm just following an easy comedic path. Actually, you know what? I brought it up. 
That's my bad. Yeah, Jess. You went Thank from you. malaria to Thank soaking. You. But there's pills you can take for both things that stay in you forever. <laughs> well, not you one. Can, what? If one stays in you for more ones? than four hours, then you should consult a physician. That's the proviso. That's the blue one. That's not the pill I'm referring to. Oh. There's several things that happen with malaria, but I don't know why Florida is the center of this now. And I, I want nothing to do with it. So I've made a decision that I won't open my balcony door. I found a bug in the room yeah. that I killed, but only with an intervening towel in between, never with my hand directly. I crush them with my bare hands, No, David. you don't. Yeah, I do. That's You that's, catch a bug out of the air? You can get malaria that way. Well, I don't live in Florida most, mostly. Well, ever. you're here now, which means you're in the middle of the sauce. You could be okay, soaked. Okay, I won't catch Floridian you're bugs not, in my Don't head. soak in the sauce. She, she can't catch malaria by squishing a bug. What you if, can't. You can get Lyme apparently from squishing a tick. So I will. Yeah, yeah you malaria. flush those down the toilet, but you can grab mosquitoes with your hands. Yeah, and you can't have premarital sex without a thrust, or without a sheet, with a hole in it. That's actually a Bubba Meister because I asked about that when Bubby I was Brister? growing up. That I was told that that is how Orthodox Jews have sex is through a sheet. I was told that. With a hole in it. In Hebrew school, with yes. a hole in it. Yep. Were you, were you is, I, is no I, one I was, this? I was privy to this information. You gotta as be well. cheating me. I'm not cheating you. I, and so I grew up assuming that that's how it goes down or how it goes in. And it only was later in life that I was told that that's the same thing as not being able to have tattoos. That it's absolute hogwash. Wait, what do you mean it's hogwash? That's no, not. No, it, if you are not Orthodox, like there are some people who think who are Jewish who think you shouldn't have tattoos. You still. go to hell but if you have tattoos. You're not going to be able to be buried in a Jewish no, we don't cemetery. That's not true. Really? Yes. Really? That's just a. That's a I don't have. Wait, I, you don't is, have hell. I don't no, have don't any have tattoos. Where does our brows go? Is, is he Jewish? He kind of. No. Is our Bryles Jewish? No. 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 Just no. So we don't. In our version, and he's of going to hell. This is easy. What are you doing? No, but, but no. It's a good point. Stugatz is the one that says that. And Stugatz is Jewish. Or so he says. No, but like you, you got to take that with a grain of kosher salt. I don't know anything about Stugatz's mother. But the rule is if your mother's she Jewish, died. you're fully Jewish. No, no. I want to go back to the whole. You can't be Moderna. buried in a Jewish cemetery. This is just a myth created yes. by whom and when? Created by mothers who don't want their sons to get tattoos. Really? I'm learning this no, for the first time I right know. now. Yes. That what? I consulted Charlotte, my rabbi bamboozled. before my first tattoo. Charlotte, do you want to go get tattoos? This is, no. I'm now <laughs> yes. on principle. I don't want one now. Wow, Be, they got you good then. <sighs> Wait, the no. Prin- what? How that are you? That the principle this. means you should. No, principle is she never will because it's been brought into. I her. can't. I can't tell you what a huge. What a. I'm googling it. This I don't is a know big that day. I don't. Yeah, I'm. Skeptical. Charlotte's having flashbacks with her mom. Like, mom, I want it. He's my boyfriend. I love him. You're not gonna do this because you're not gonna be buried in. The you're not getting grimace on your ass, Charlotte. <laughs> Unless you can change. It would be the, the hamburger, okay? <laughs> that was always my excuse. Mom, I'll get a tattoo, but I can change it around in case there's a breakup. I can make a C, a D, and a D, a P. It's all going to work out. And then I can be buried. 